on a computer, you could simply delete something and it's gone forever. To execute things, its software relies on binary language, which is composed of zeros and ones. And not only computers, but other electronics use it too, like calculators, smartphones, and even electrical coffee makers and microwaves. But this set of numbers has to be physically stored somehow. That's where magnetic media come into play, or simply put, hard drives. The positive and negative poles of any storage device can easily convert electronic information into the physical kind. That way, a 1 in the binary language represents an active electrical signal, while a 0 makes it stop. Like this, the information can be saved for as long as necessary and without a power supply. Hard drives don't even have to be within the device. They could be CDs, flash drives, or external hard drives. So any file you want to delete already has a physical presence in the shape of electrical signals. When you press delete, it'll go to the recycle bin or trash first. But it's not gone forever yet. The file has just been relocated to another folder you could easily recover it from. So you're at a party and decide to crash a group convo, but trip and fall on the snack bar with all the drinks spilling on you. Everyone's laughing. You can't really undo or delete anything, so you're going to have to live with that memory for the rest of your life. In the case of a computer, you just open the recycle bin, empty out what you want to delete, and it's completely gone. The computer just removes the reference to the file in the hard drive. And once it's been removed, the computer can no longer detect the file where it physically took place. That means there's a new vacant spot where any new data can be put. So if you were at that party and tripped over, you could simply overwrite the whole scene with a new and improved one, and no one would ever remember what happened. And you could even do it over and over again, with many new scenarios taking place. Boy, are you clumsy. RAM! Nah, not the one with horns. There we go! Random Access Memory, or RAM, is your device's main memory to get things done. When looking at the specs of your brand new phone, you might think you're going to have speedy performance with large storage. But having a lot of space doesn't mean it'll work fast. Double-clicking on a program or document, dragging, dropping, and typing – every single task the computer does uses its RAM. Think of it as your basic motor skills. Your brain can store memories, like remembering that time you tripped at a party in front of everyone. Sheesh! RAM is like knowing to cover your head if something falls from above. It's quickly accessible and doesn't need any thought processing. So if your RAM is slow, like 2 gigabytes, then it'll be solid enough to do basic spreadsheets and writing documents or emails. But it certainly won't handle editing a video in 4K with maximum rendering. So if your device runs slow and you work with very large files, consider upgrading the RAM so that basic functions are lightning fast and everything's done at an improved rate. This time, the whole party is out of control. The venue is overcrowded with unwanted guests, and there's food being tossed all over the place. Your computer might be overwhelmed with many things functioning at the same time. Or it could be infected with viruses and malware. In such case, your whole system lags, and you feel like you just want to throw your computer out the window. Please don't do that. I might be down there. Reformatting your computer is a way of erasing all your files and restoring the basic programs that come with the OS back to their original settings. It technically formats your hard drive, which can be tedious when cleaning it up manually. So get some flash drives or hard disks ready before you do the irreversible. Once the system is formatted, nothing can be recovered. There, you finally got rid of unwanted guests and all the chaotic mess. You're back to the factory settings of basic music and snacks with good people. You didn't even trip over and become the new meme for your community. Defragmentation is a way to reorganize the related data on a hard drive that's gone scattered all over. It arranges those bits and pieces and puts them back together in a clean and neat way. A lot of people misjudge their devices and think it's time to reformat them or even buy new ones. But disk fragmentation is extremely common. If the party was packed too thick, then defragmentation would be like getting someone to clean up and reorganize everything. If the snack counter was filled with board games and everyone's phones all mixed together, the cleaner would simply arrange them all for everyone to pick out what they needed. Disk fragmentation happens when a file is broken into different pieces to fit on the disk. 
Since many files are always being written, deleted, or resized, it's only normal for it to happen. And it gets worse when a file is distributed in different locations. People end up thinking the OS needs an update or some viruses ended up on their disk. But compared to the computer's RAM and CPU, the disk is the weakest of all. Think of your computer as a giant water reservoir and the disk as a little faucet. Once that faucet gets clogged, you won't be able to empty out the water properly. Besides slowing down performance, fragmentation can hamper reading or writing files, take time in virus scanning, and slow the boot-up time. A simple method to solve this is to organize your files. But if it's too much of a hassle, then you can download a program to do it for you. I like that. Once your system's defragged, you'll start seeing its performance increase like brand new again. What do radio waves and devices have in common? That's right, Bluetooth. The way it works is by pairing two devices, like a keyboard or headset, to a phone or computer without any interference and within a certain range. Unlike Wi-Fi routers that connect directly to the internet, Bluetooth acts by sending traffic from device to device without a third party. This makes a connection secure and stable and even keeps power usage low to improve battery life. Because of the amazing radio waves, many other devices like garage door remotes, cordless phones, and baby monitors make sure they don't interfere with one another. If they didn't, your house would look like it was taken over by a rogue robot. Alert! Rogue robot! Computers can now literally fit in your pockets. Yeah, a smartphone is technically a computer. But the very first computers were as big as a room. They were made to solve problems rather than fun stuff like gaming, YouTube, and social media. One of the first methods to input data was punch cards. Just like a binary code relies on zeros and ones to be read as electrical signals, a punch card system worked by creating holes in paper cards. They were either made by hand or machine and then slotted into a card reader connected to a computer. It then read the information and converted the sequence of holes into digital info. The system was created as early as the 1800s, but it was the start of the technological revolution. The punch cards would then evolve into zeros and ones, just like we have today. In 1946, a computer called ENIAC was built and said to have weighed 30 tons, having 18,000 vacuum tubes all for processing information. When they first turned it on, the lights dimmed in many areas of Philadelphia. That computer could only perform a single task since it didn't have an operating system. In 1951, they got rid of vacuum tubes and replaced them with transistors. And at the same time, the first commercial computer was released to the public. Soon, the computer started taking more modern shape. Over 100 computer programming languages, memory, and operating systems appeared. They even included types of storage like tape and disks, and even printers. Another decade, and integrated circuits came onto the stage. Computers became smaller and more powerful. They were able to run many programs at the same time instead of being a one-trick pony. And then, in the 80s, we saw the rise of Microsoft and Apple. Apple gave us the sleek interface and a computer mouse. But it wasn't until the 90s when Microsoft gave the world the Windows operating system. And the rest is history. Well, technically it's all history, but you get the picture. Hey, don't trip on anything.